Hey, physicists. So let's talk about some two dimensional vectors and um, how we can add these together and what we do for those, even to break them down a little bit into components. So um, let's think about adding vectors up together first. And um, let's think about our compass. And by convention, recall that north and east are the positive directions for movement or motion. If we're thinking about um, moving on land and moving in directions, these are the positive directions. Likewise, on a graph, those are going to line up with those being the positive directions, OK? So and remember, in fact, I think that's called the first quadrant. And that first quadrant is where both signs on x and y are positive. So what will happen sometimes is you could see these described as x and y vectors, um, x and y. Sometimes those might get turned into i hat and j hat vectors, OK? Um, you'll see that a little bit more in math class and higher fit levels of physics if you're going into engineering or something like that. But um, let's just use the north and east for now, okay? And so let's say we start at Pickens High School, and here we've got the school with the little roof and the little U.S. flag on top and the school door and whatever, okay? Remember that you want to try to draw pictures to describe the problems when you're thinking about them. And let's say that we all go for a walk, we go for a class hike, and when we leave the school, let's say that we walk um, one, two, three, four, five, six kilometers east. Okay. So remember that every vector is going to have a magnitude and a direction. You could think of the magnitude almost as just the six, but of course six doesn't have a lot of meaning without units. So six kilometers right now would really be the magnitude and east would be the direction, okay? And so if we started from the school, right now only going in one direction, our displacement would be six kilometers. Think about what would happen if we walked back towards the school, if we walked two kilometers west back towards the school, how far away from the school would we be? Four kilometers. And that would be our displacement from our starting position, not the total distance we've walked, but the displacement, how far away we are from the school. Okay. Now, for two dimensions, let's say that we take this hike. Okay. And let's say that we also have walked uh, four kilometers north. And so I'm going to draw that from the school. One, two, three, four kilometers north. Four kilometers north. Okay. Now, if this was a hike, we can't do those two things at exactly the same time, right? We can't walk in one direction and then start from the same starting point to walk north. So the way we add vectors is we again, just like with the one dimensional ones, we're gonna start the tail of the next vector in the sequence from the head of the vector that came before that in the sequence. So if we say this six kilometers east, and I'm just gonna shift it a little bit over here, okay, to redraw this, one, two, three, four, five, six, so I'm using the squares right now, six kilometers east, okay? If we say that we move this other vector so its tail starts from that head, then one, two, three, four kilometers north, okay? And when we add those vectors, what do we get for the overall thing? Where have we ended up? Well, we've ended up here, and how far away would we be from the school then? What would we call that overall vector showing that displacement? Well, that would be the resultant, right? And so we'll often represent the resultant vector with an R. 
Now in geometry, you might have called that the hypotenuse, okay? In algebra, you should remember that often this is called C and that these other parts of the triangle could be A and B. And again, it doesn't really matter which one we put the A and the B on, but the key here is that north and east, these two directions are what angle apart? Well, they are at 90 degrees apart, correct? So this makes a right triangle. And as I happened to mention to Thomas last week, we were gonna get into triangles in physics because now we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. Because we know this is a right triangle, because right triangle, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay? And so if we just want to know the size, the magnitude of the resultant vector, then four squared plus six squared equals c squared. Four squared is 16, six squared is 36. This equals 52. And C squared is 52, which means C is the square root of 52. Now you should be able to estimate in your head that this is gonna be just a little bit bigger than seven kilometers, okay? And this isn't precisely in the Northeast direction, but it's close to being in the Northeast direction. So we'll go ahead and label that now for the direction, okay? You can, of course, pull up an actual calculator, do the square root of 52, which is 7.21, okay? So C equals 7.27. 7.2, all right, especially since we only had the four and the six kilometers. Maybe we should have one decimal on each of those, but so um, that's what you get for the math here for adding these two vectors. Now notice that if you're on an X and a Y coordinate system, if you're on a Cartesian coordinate system, then your X and Y directions are also 90 degrees apart, okay? Now, what happens if your vectors looked a little bit different. What happens if you walk six kilometers east and four kilometers south? Well, your resultant is still gonna have the same magnitude, correct? But it's gonna have a different direction. In fact, this direction now would mostly be southeast. Okay. So this is how we add vectors in two dimensions. And for us to figure out the exact direction of the resultant vector, we're going to have to do a little bit more with our angles here. Okay. So when you guys return to in person classes, I will give you one of these um, handouts for a polar graph paper, okay? And on this polar graph paper, we're gonna turn it so that you can see where the zero angle would be, okay? So the zero angle is always going to be going in the X direction, in a positive X direction, if we're trying to uh, compare polar coordinates and X, Y coordinates. And on here, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up creating a unit circle. And from our origin here at the center of our polar coordinates, we're going to draw out a vector that is gonna be the equivalent of one for whatever units that one is expressed in. And so, this right here, we're gonna to go to one, two, three, four. We're gonna go out to this fourth arc here. Notice that when you get out this far, you start to get a lot more of these fine lines, okay? And so coming out this far to this point is going to represent 
zero degrees on our unit circle. Okay, see how the zero is all the way over here? So this would be an angle theta equals zero degrees. Okay. If you were trying to, and R is one here, and sometimes we use a lowercase r. So for this angle, have we moved in the y direction at all? No, we've only moved in the x direction, correct? And so in x, y coordinates, so x, y coordinates, what you're gonna have for an R of one for a unit vector here going around the circle, you're going to have one in the X direction and zero in the Y direction, okay? And if we do the same thing with 90 degrees, notice that the 90 degrees here at the top, really you would be looking at this with the paper turned, right? But that's not how you're actually gonna look at it in math class. If we come out to the same distance away and we draw our unit vector here, when theta is 90 degrees, my x, y, have I moved in the x direction at all? If I've gone straight up the y axis or if I've gone straight out at 90 degrees, I have not, correct? So this then is zero for X and one for Y. Now what you wanna do is you wanna work through this and you wanna fill in some of the exact values that you know. And we're also gonna go ahead and fill in our approximate decimal values because those are good to know for most of these. So let's do 30 degrees. Let's do 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. So here's 30 degrees. Here is 45 degrees. And here is 60 degrees. Okay. Sixty degrees, forty five degrees, thirty degrees. And those are the angles from the x axis or the angles that we've gone through from zero. Okay. So let me take a step back here as well and remind you that when you're looking at these unit vectors on this unit circle, these unit vectors, what we're doing here is we're seeing for this vector here with this big R, how far did we go in the X direction and how far did we go in the Y direction? So when you think about these sides, remember that this side here where the resultant is, is called the hypotenuse, okay? The angle we're looking at is always here. See where that shows up in the unit circle? That would be this angle here. I'm gonna draw it on this first arc, okay? Here for the 30 degrees, just as an example. And so, what are these sides of the right triangle compared to this angle here? Well, this side over here, this side here on the triangle is on the side that is opposite of the angle. And this side here, our delta X is adjacent to the angle. And it's not always going to be the case that depending on how you draw the picture, it's not always the case that the adjacent side is your delta X and that the opposite side is your delta Y. But when we draw the unit circle this way, that will be true. And so think about what you know about all of these sides, the opposite, the adjacent, the hypotenuse. 
hopefully you're starting to think about Sokotoa. And with Sokotoa, the sine equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. And it's not just the sine cosine tangent, I should say the sine of the angle, right? Cosine of the angle, tangent of the angle gives us those, okay? So if you know the angle, then the sine of theta gives you the ratio between the y and the hypotenuse. For all of these right now on our unit circle, the hypotenuse is one, okay? And so if you take the sine of 30, then you would know the y coordinate. And if you take the cosine of 30, then you would know the x coordinate. Now notice that when you look down here, if we kind of drop our x value, and you don't have to do this on yours, I'm just trying to do this with these graphs here, that's kind of close. If we drop our x value down and compare it to our r equals one down here, this is still pretty large, right? Our x value is still close to one, although we know it's less than one. Well, so the x value here, the exact value for the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of three divided by two. And the y value, the sine of 30 degrees is one half. Now notice how that will flip for our 60 degree one here. And if we compare that to our y value, notice that our y value, hmm, still not perfect, but notice that our y value here is also now closer to one, okay? But if you were to drop this down to the x-axis, let me just put the ruler there. See how that's exactly at that halfway mark? If it's straight up and straight down, see the arcs here? So see how that point where the pen is pointing is halfway between the center and this first, second, third, fourth arc around the unit circle? So our X and Y up here for 60 degrees is one half and square root of three over two. 45 degrees, notice how this is past the halfway point on the X and also past the halfway point on the Y. For 45 degrees, this is gonna be the square root of two over two comma, square root of two over two for our exact values, okay? Now, what we would like to do is we would like to go ahead and define these. So of course, one half is 0 0.5 as a decimal. The square root of two over two and the square root of three over two, root of three over two is 0 0.866. And the square root of two over two is 0 0.707. So we wanna know how to approximate those so that we know what reasonable answers would be in physics problems, but um, this is gonna be the unit circle. This is the start of the unit circle. And when you guys get back, you're gonna get one of these and I'm gonna ask you to create the whole unit circle for all of your, um, for every 15 degrees of measure, okay? So at 15 degrees as the angle, we don't actually have exact values that I know of off the top of my head, but we can certainly fill in the decimal values for our X's and Y's, okay? For the approximations for those. 
we'll go to three decimal places for those. But um, this then connects back to our addition of vectors because we're going to use this unit circle to help us figure out what the exact directions are of these resultant vectors.